Caribbean's Oasis of the Seas has been a game changer ever since she debuted in 2009 and is known around the world for the amazing things you can do on board. And today, I've got a full tour of this amazing cruise ship. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and today we've got a full cruise ship tour of Royal Caribbean's Oasis of the Seas. Oasis of the Seas is one of the largest cruise ships in the entire world and like all other Oasis class cruise ships, she has a lot to offer on board. She debuted in 2009 and at that point, she was the largest cruise ship in the world. Now in the years since then, her sister ships have eclipsed her in size by a little bit, not terrible, but... Despite losing the title of the largest cruise ship in the world, seeing Oasis of the Seas in person will really reinforce the notion of how large this ship really is. And the good news, though, is don't judge anything by its size, including cruise ships, because despite her imposing stature, Royal Caribbean spent a lot of time coming up with a way to make it really easy to navigate the ship. And we're going to start off today with the pool deck. And of course, pool deck is a hub of activity. And you've got water slides, pools, of course, bars. Lots of great activities to see and enjoy, and the Perfect Storm water slides are a real hit with families and really anybody because it's just a lot of fun. They're complimentary to go down the water slides, so you can go down there whenever they're open, which is pretty much every day. There are hours to them, but sun is shining. Odds are the water slides will be open. You can always check Cruise Compass for hours of the water slides and really any operating hours for anything that's happening on board the ship. But the pool deck has a couple different pools you can choose from while on board. The pool area has a Caribbean-style pool deck makeover that occurred in 2019, so it looks a little bit different than it did before, but you've got the lime and coconut signature bar along with a different look to the pool area. And whether you're talking about the sports pool or the beach pool or anything else in between, there's a lot of outdoor space, which is a good variety for swimming options. There are actually four separate pools areas, and they're all located on deck 15. You'll find a variety of seating along the pool deck in the form of uh, pool chairs and whatnot. There's also casitas, which do have an extra cost to rent them if you'd like to. Now, for kids, they're going to really enjoy Splashaway Bay. So we talked about the water slides already, but Splashaway Bay is an aqua park where kids can enjoy going and splashing and getting splashed and getting soaked and really spending a lot of time in and out of the water. It's an interactive kids aqua park. And the great thing is there's chairs all around there. So as parents, you can watch them and observe them. There's also a baby splash area. If you have a children who are still in diapers, this area is specifically for them as opposed to the rest of the pool deck in which babies in diapers are not allowed to go into. The nice thing about the Splashaway Bay is that the water slides, while they do have a height restriction, are less than the other Perfect Storm water slides. It's a little bit easier for kids to go to. You'll also find ping pong tables to play on Oasis of the Seas. These ping pong tables are on the pool deck and they're free to use. Moving around the pool deck, you're going to find, again, as I mentioned, lots of chairs. And really, the pool deck is deck 15 and 16. So there's two different decks to the pool area. Variety of seating to enjoy. By the way, if you're a smoker, the smoking section is always on this port side of the pool deck. You'll also find hot tubs to enjoy. And yes, complimentary soft serve ice cream throughout the day. Come here as many times as you want. Get that ice cream and you're good to go. You'll also find bars, the lime and coconut bars, different venues, different bars to be able to go to. They all have the same basic pool bar menu, so whichever one has a shorter line or an available server is an option for you. In addition to the bars themselves, you'll also find waiters who will go around the pool deck during the daytime to take your drink orders. So if you're having a good time and you're sunning yourself or just enjoying sitting out by the pool, you can wait for a waiter to come by or go to the bar to get one. If you have a drink package, by the way, a Royal Caribbean Unlimited drink package, they do work at the bar, so no worries at all. In fact, your drink package is going to work pretty much at every bar, lounge, and restaurant on board the ship, so you're good to go there. And really, when you're talking about pool day activities, you know, for a lot of people, it's relaxing. I think when you talk about a cruise, it's about enjoying the wonderful ambiance around you, the ocean as you're passing by, sunsets, and of course, everything else in between. There's a lot of good people watching as well when you're on a Royal Caribbean cruise. The casitas, as I mentioned earlier, are a paid option, and these are basically a dedicated spot for you on the pool deck for you and your family to enjoy. They do have a cost to them. You can reserve them before your cruise via the cruise planner website. As to whether or not I think the casitas are worthwhile, I mean, I personally don't get them, but if you're the type of person who wants to spend all day on the pool and have a dedicated reserve spot for you, it might not be a bad option. But the great thing is, despite this overall size and the fact that the Oasis class ships offer so much to do and see on board and i think a lot of people tend to focus indoors and inside the ship there are still beautiful ocean views from the pool deck and no matter what royal caribbean cruise ship you're on the views of the ocean and the ability to be outdoors is really really nice 
If you're staying in a suite, you're gonna have a reserved area of the pool deck just for you, which is all about the sweet sun deck. The sweet sun deck is reserved for sweet guests who are in a grand suite or higher. Sorry, junior sweet guest that doesn't apply to you. But this is an area just for you to go to and enjoy some reserved seating. It's a little less crowded and it's spot for you to take advantage of this dedicated venue just for being a sweet guest. All you need to do is your seat pass card to get in here and enjoy the space. Next up is the Solarium, which is the adults only for ages 16 and over pool area with two cantilevered whirlpool hot tubs, which extend 12 feet off from either side of the ship. So this is an area reserved just for adults to enjoy. And it's a semi covered, which means it's not totally enclosed, but it does provide some protection from the sun and more specifically from the wind. But really this area of the Solarium, like on all Royal Coming cruise ships is designed to be a little haven for adults to enjoy. You also find the Solarium bar in the Solarium, which just like any other pool bar, is a dedicated bar for solarium guests by the way in terms of the solarium you know i mentioned it's for 16 and above if you've got younger kids and you're just passing through to get from point a to point b that's no problem at all the issue is children who are under 16 cannot like hang out in the solarium if that makes sense a nice other benefit of the solarium is you get a little more padded seats so the chair is a little more comfortable and you get wonderful views being in the front of the ship you get some amazing views of where you're going where you are and I really like being able to just stare out to the ocean while you're in the solarium. It does have a nice wading pool as well. It's rather large, so some place to go to to cool down. But a lot of people like going to the solarium just to relax, take a nap, read, or all three, quite frankly. Now, something else you'll find on Oasis of the Seas you may not find on her sister ships is an outdoor deck on the solarium. This is an open air sun deck in the solarium, something different that you don't usually find when you're talking about the Solarium and other Oasis class ships, they built this in 2019 as part of her refurbishment. And so this is an area you can go to suntan and enjoy being outdoors. The breeze also is a little stronger here. So depending on the weather conditions, that can actually be an advantage because it helps make you feel a little cooler out and a little less stifling. You're also gonna find near the Solarium, the Solarium Bistro. Solarium Bistro is a complimentary restaurant on board the Oasis of the Seas. And the nice thing with the Solarium Bistro is a little bit different. Uh, they kind of describe it as a Mediterranean style dining. And what's nice about the Solarium Bistro is it's something a little bit different. It's also less crowded. Most people don't even know this place exists because it's in the front of the ship in the Solarium. And don't worry, you can bring your kids here to eat. This is different despite the fact that it has the name Solarium in the name of Solarium Bistro. Kids are allowed to eat here. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In fact, for breakfast, this is a hidden gem to go to because far fewer people know about it. And they do the omelet station, which is really great because that's a very popular option in the Windjammer, air, which we'll see a little bit later in this video. But I would say that this is probably one of the best spots for breakfast on board the ship if you want to sit down, breakfast meal, or really any meal while they're open. The other thing is it's a little combination, a hybrid, if you will, of sit down and buffet. So there are some things you'll get yourself other things will be brought to you so you can enjoy that you're also going to find the chef's table location here the chef's table is a gastronomic tour it's a multi-hour experience in which a carefully prepared meal is brought to you it's if you're a foodie this is definitely something to check out all right let's head to a new specialty restaurant on oasis of the seas and that is port side barbecue port side barbecue is a new concept for any royal green cruise ship and it is a deep dive into the barbecue of the south i am a big fan of this restaurant because it's something totally different that you don't find on any other royal caribbean cruise ships portside barbecue is a specialty restaurant that offers slow cooked smoked meats that are popular across the united states this is a type of cuisine not well represented on royal caribbean in the past so it really aimed to fill in that gap portside barbecue is a specialty restaurant so that means it costs extra uh, for on an a la carte basis you only pay for what you order this isn't a cover charge restaurant you can just simply go here and order one thing and only pay for one thing which is really convenient especially if you want a quick meal or not a giant meal in general unlike other specialty restaurants this is a counter service restaurant where you order your food at the counter and then take your food back to your table royal caribbean place portside barbecue on deck 15 of oasis the seas in the former location of the teen club the restaurant has a bit of a rustic feel to it with wood floors dark wood tables and brick walls all around there's outdoor seating as well, both along the port side of the ship as well as behind the restaurant. And there's a surprisingly large amount of seating available at Portside Barbecue. So even at its busiest, you really should have no issues finding a spot, especially because a lot of people will take the food and go somewhere else, maybe back to their chair on the pool. Portside Barbecue has three menus to match its serving times, lunch, dinner, and late night. The lunch and late night dinner menu is a smaller menu that primarily focuses on combinations, whereas the dinner menu greatly expands the options provided. 
Something else you're going to find in Portside of Barbecue is live music performed here, which is a really nice touch. I'm a big fan of live music on any Royal Caribbean cruise ship, so if there's a live performer in Portside of Barbecue, you definitely want to check it out. Now, in addition to the food I talked about earlier, you're also going to find traditional barbecue sides to enjoy, coleslaw, mac and cheese, cornbread, and more. And there's some great views of the rest of the pool deck. In fact, let's go out to the pool deck and enjoy the sports deck, which is on the back of Oasis of the Seas. So we're still on this deck 15, the pool deck, if you will, but now we're on the back and the sports car starting off with mini golf, a complimentary activity to enjoy. Grab a golf club, a couple balls, and try your best, whether you're keeping score or just plain old cheating <laughs> or just having a good time along the way. The mini golf course is a fun activity to do for families. It's available throughout the cruise. So you can go here on your own, and it's a self-guided kind of experience. You're going to notice on the back of the ship as you're looking up at some suites. Those are where some of the loft suites are located. But let's continue back on the sports heading closer to the Ultimate Abyss. Before we get to the Ultimate Abyss, we've got the Wipeout Bar. This is another bar venue you can go to and grab a drink. It can sometimes be a little crowded, but sometimes not so crowded. It depends on the time of day. And a lot of people don't know this place exists, quite frankly. It's a nice spot on sea days. I like having a drink here while watching the ocean go by. On Oasis of the Seas, you're going to find not one, but two flow riders. These are the surf simulators that are available on Royal Caribbean cruise ships. Many, not all, but Oasis of the Seas has two of them. And this is a complimentary experience. There are some times in which it's rented out for extra cost, obviously. But most of the cases, it's just a come as you go, first come, first surf, I guess. You can try your, your hand at stand up surfing, boogie boarding. And it's uh, a lot of people really, really love the flow rider because it's just a little fun something different to do and because it's included with your cruise fare it's a fun activity there's also a basketball court on oasis of the seas which is used for well you know basketball but it can also be used for things like pickleball soccer tennis dodgeball so there's a variety of activities and it can be converted to any of them depending on what the needs are in a lot of cases it's just simply you know first come first serve but sometimes they do different activities like scheduled activities in which things are organized by the sports and activity staff there's also a zip line on Oasis of the Seas. No cost to use the zip line on Oasis. You just get your gear, go down it. It's a short zip line. But if you've never done a zip line before, this is a great first starter because the experience is exactly the same here as it is in a zip line on land. But number one, there's no additional cost. Number two, it's pretty short. So you can kind of get your bearings to understand what it's all like. You're also going to find on the back of the sports court some fantastic views of basically the, what's behind you, the wake behind you and everything else. So if you're looking for a great spot for sail away, this might be a hidden gem. A lot of people go to the front of the ship, but the back offers some great views, especially when you're sailing away out of Miami. Just some beautiful views on Oasis of the Seas. Another new venue on Oasis is El Loco Fresh. El Loco Fresh is a complimentary, no additional cost venue where you're going to find tacos, burritos, chips, salsa, guacamole. It's a buffet style, so you just grab your plate, grab what you want, and enjoy it as you see fit. The great thing about this is it just offers favorites. I mean, who doesn't love tacos, quesadillas, burritos? You can customize it as you want. Lots of guac, no guac, salad, no salad, however you want to do it. And I love the salsa station because you can really go to town. I personally prefer as much guacamole as humanly possible combined with as much salsa as humanly possible with like a side of tacos, I guess. <laughs> the tacos are just a vehicle to get me the salsa and the guacamole into my mouth. And it's just phenomenal because you can customize it exactly the way that you like it. You're also going to find another signature activity on Oasis of the Seas, the Ultimate Abyss. The Ultimate Abyss is a dry slide, not a water slide, but it allows you to go down 10 stories. You ride in a mat down there. So it's a dry slide, as I mentioned. You get into this mat, you go down the slide, and it brings you all the way back down to the boardwalk. And it looks really scary, but it's actually not that scary because you don't go that fast. I think a lot of people, including myself, before they ever go on it, think, oh, man, you must zoom down there. But it's really not that bad at all. All right, since we went down the Ultimate Abyss, let's check out the Boardwalk neighborhood. The Boardwalk is one of the signature neighborhoods or areas of Oasis of the Seas. You're going to find different neighborhoods around Oasis. The idea is to help separate and distinguish parts of the ship, so that way it's easier to navigate. The Boardwalk neighborhood is based on the seaside boardwalks like Atlantic City from years past. It's a little bit whimsical, but it offers different dining venues and shopping opportunities while you're there. Starting off with the Boardwalk Doghouse, so this is a complimentary venue to enjoy, well, a lot of different kinds of hot dogs. You can top it off just the way you want it. They've got Coney dogs, they've got Chicago dogs, they've got sausages here. So you tell them how you want it grilled and how you want it topped and they give it to you. Great spot for just a quick bite to eat. You may also notice near the boardwalk, boardwalk rooms that face the boardwalk. These are regular standard boardwalk rooms, but instead of facing the ocean, they face the boardwalk, which is kind of an interesting and new change. 
Also, you're going to find a carousel. Of course, you're going to find a carousel on the boardwalk. This is a signature activity, no additional cost, in which, yes, you can ride the carousel, you, your kids, or both, as many times as you want. This is a handcrafted carousel that's based on, obviously, some of the classic carousels you may remember from your youth. And it is a gorgeous place to enjoy a couple quick rides, day or night. I recommend actually doing it both, especially at nighttime. The lighting is absolutely phenomenal. Next to the carousel, you're going to find Sugar Beach, which is a candy and ice cream shop. And they offer, well, candy and ice cream to purchase over here for additional cost. The ice cream is a variety of flavors. And if you're wondering, well, isn't there a complimentary ice cream on board? There is, but sometimes you feel like different flavors. And the nice thing about the ice cream shop here at Sugar Beach is you have a variety of flavors you can choose from in addition to candy. And for a lot of people, it's just an opportunity to purchase some candy, whether they want to consume it on board the ship or bring it home. You're on vacation and purchasing some candy might not be the worst decision you could possibly make. Across from Sugar Beach is the Beach Shop, which is a apparel store in which you can find, well, beach-inspired apparel. So there are different shops on board the ship. Primarily, most of them are on the promenade, which we'll see in a little bit. But the idea behind the boardwalk shops here is that you got more like beach and pool-inspired garb. So if you maybe forgot something or just want a window shop, there's opportunities to purchase, you know, tropical-infused clothing and accessories and whatnot. So if you're looking for a cover-up, a beach bag, bathing suit, this might be the place for you. Right next door is Playmaker Sports Bar and Arcades. Playmakers is, well, a sports bar. It's located on the boardwalk, and it's got that vibe that if you're looking to watch the game, have a beer, maybe have some wings or burgers, this is the place for you. Playmakers does cost extra. It's a specialty restaurant, and you pay for each item that you order. So it's all a la carte. If you order one burger, you just pay for the one burger. If you pay for a bunch of different things, well, then you're going to pay for all that. But the nice thing about Playmakers is, obviously, they have a ton of TVs to look at, and you can catch whatever games they happen to have coverage of. When you're on a roller coaster ship, it's not quite the same coverage that you get at home. They have an international feed. They get most of the popular games. So if you're going on a cruise over the Super Bowl, as an example, don't worry, you'll be covered there. And when it comes to different sporting events, whether it's NFL games, Major League Baseball, hockey, or anything else in between, you're going to find a good selection of games. Not every single game will be available to you. There is a schedule that you can peruse while you're in Playmakers, but they'll have that there for you to enjoy. You're also going to find Zoltar. This costs extra. In addition to all the other arcade games you're going to find at Playmakers, by the way, Zoltar is a lot of fun. A little nod to Big, the old classic Tom Hanks movie. But you're also going to find arcade games to enjoy. Zoltar and the arcade games do cost extra to play. Across from Playmakers is Johnny Rockets, the classic 50s-style diner experience that's available on most Royal Caribbean cruise ships. And Johnny Rockets does have an extra cost to it. This is a cover charge. It's a lot cheaper than other restaurants, especially for specialty dining. And it offers burgers, hot dogs, fries, chili fries, milkshakes. It's a just a classic. You may have dined at a Johnny Rockets on land, and the menu is very similar to the land-based menu. It is a different menu. It's a little more pared down, to be perfectly honest with you, compared to what they have on land. But you're going to have all the classics here, including some great 50s and 60s songs to listen to while you dine. There's outdoor and indoor seating as well. And Johnny Rockets is available for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For breakfast, it's complimentary, a great spot, because a lot of people don't even know that it's open or that they serve breakfast or that it costs nothing extra for breakfast only. But for lunch and dinner, there's an additional cost for the cover charge to dine at Johnny Rockets. Well, back out to the boardwalk. You know what I love about the boardwalk is just how beautiful it is. I love the combination of indoors and outdoors, the great ocean views. And it wouldn't really be the boardwalk without one of its other signature activities, which, of course, is the Aqua Theater on the back of the boardwalk area. The Aqua Theater is where you're going to find signature shows in the evening time. They also sometimes have other events during the daytime. But really, when you're talking about the Aqua Theater, this is an open-air amphitheater in which you're going to find original Royal Caribbean productions to enjoy. These are must-see in which you've got acrobatics, aquatics, diving, and, of course, dance. It's a lot of fun, a lot of energy, and trust me when I tell you it's absolutely worth doing. What you want to do is as soon as you get on board the ship, you want to make reservations for any shows you see in the Aqua Theater because there's limited seating and they do go quickly. So my advice is try to get them as early as you can. It's really important because these shows are excellent. I really, really enjoy them. You're also going to find on the Boardwalk neighborhood the rock climbing wall, and just like the Flow Riders, not one but two of them. Royal Caribbean really made a name for itself many years ago by adding a rock climbing wall to cruise ships. Before then, they didn't really exist, but now they've got them. And on Oasis of the Seas, you've actually got two different rock walls to choose from. 
And the nice thing about the rock walls is there's different paths. So depending on your ability level, you can try one or both. Well, let's head down to the jogging track on Oasis of the Sea. So on other Royal Caribbean cruise ships that are not Oasis class ships, sometimes the jogging track combines with other areas of the ship, but Oasis class ships actually have their own dedicated jogging track. And the nice thing is if you're not interested in jogging or maybe you want to take a break from jogging, they have great views of the aft. There's some chairs out there you can enjoy, but the jogging track is great if you want to walk, jog or run. And the other nice thing, because it's dedicated, you get a lot less people who are kind of in your way who are just simply walking around. So there's less crowds to deal with. I think you're going to find the jogging track to be a little bit of a hidden gem in the grand scheme of things, because again, obviously people are down there to jog, but it's got some great views of the ocean. So even if you're not jogging, I do recommend actually walking down there. Let's head up to deck eight now and check out Central Park. Central Park is another signature area of the Oasis of the Season, another neighborhood. And this is an actual real park. All these plants and trees you see are real and live and they curate them. It's incredible. So this is a real park in which is really in the middle of the ship. If you were looking down on Oasis of the Seas, this is right smack dab in the middle and you're going to find bars. You're going to find some shopping. You're going to find some restaurants. So a variety of different things to check out. Something I really like about Central Park is the fact that it's not just an extra space on board. I love the meandering paths. And of course, there's different flowers and plants and bushes. Look at your cruise compass. Occasionally, they do a curated tour with the person who takes care of all the plants on board. It's kind of interesting to see what's there. Let's start off our tour of Central Park with Chops Grill, the signature specialty restaurant on, well, pretty much any Royal Caribbean cruise ships. Chops Grill is a steakhouse. So you're going to find a variety of cuts of steak along with other main courses like salmon and lamb and chicken but really if you're going to chops grill you're probably here for well steak of course chops grill is on pretty much every royal Caribbean cruise ship and what's great about it is it's consistent across the fleet and this is a wonderful experience you know chops like any specialty restaurant is available to enjoy for an extra charge you can choose to pay the cover charge to eat at chops grill or maybe get a dining package which is really good if you're planning on eating more than one specialty restaurant while on board the ship. Reservations are a really good idea for any specialty restaurant, by the way. So if at all possible, make reservations in advance. If you have a dining package, you must wait till you get on board the ship to make the reservation, but just do that on day one. It's a really good idea to ensure that you have a spot and a time for you. The nice thing also about Chops Grill on Oasis of the Seas is they have outdoor seating. So you have a choice of eating indoors or outdoors. And depending on the weather outside, that can either be a really good or maybe not so great idea. You know, sometimes, sometimes that summer weather can be a little stifling out there. But I do love that they offer El Fresco dining here at Chop Show. They don't find that elsewhere. You're also going to find on Oasis of the Seas Giovanni's Table, which is an Italian restaurant, especially restaurant by Royal Caribbean. And Giovanni's Table is the original rendition of Giovanni's. Maybe you've heard of some of the new updates on Odyssey of the Seas or Wonder of the Seas. But here on Oasis, it's the classic Giovanni's Table which of course serves up, well, classic Italian fare. Lots of pastas, different dishes all around to enjoy at Giovanni's. Cover charge here as well, and especially restaurant packages do work as well at Giovanni's. And what I like about Giovanni's the most is that it is, like I said earlier, classic Italian. It is, there's not necessarily checkerboard, red and white tablecloth, but it's pretty darn close to that. You're gonna find a good selection of foods to enjoy. And it's always satisfying. You know, it's not gonna be anyone's maybe favorite restaurant of all time, but every time I go to Giovanni's, I really like it. By the way, if you go here for dinner, you might want to consider ordering the steak. I know it sounds weird because Chops is across the street and this is an Italian restaurant, but their filet is really good at Giovanni's. And just like Chops, they also have outdoor seating at Giovanni's as well. But I think my favorite specialty restaurant in Central Park has to be 150 Central Park. This is another specialty restaurant you're only going to find on ships that have Central Park. And 150 Central Park looks like it's a really fancy pants, frou-frou kind of place. It's really not. 150 Central Park is essentially nouveau American food, as I would describe it. I think Rilgerman has a different description of it. But regardless, it's just, you know, more of an updated menu. But don't worry, there's things like steak on here, and you've got soups, and you've got some fish dishes. But what I love about 150 Central Park is there's a lot of great options here. First of all, you've got the garlic knots that start off the day. And, of course, I'm going to skip right to dessert. <laughs> the fried cheesecake is worth the admission just in and of itself. But the beef tenderloin for two might be the best steak on Oasis of the Seas. And yes, you can order the beef tenderloin for just one person if you just want to have it all to yourself. It's a great experience. I love the ambiance of 150 Central Park. And it's a really fun restaurant. And it's not really that much of a elevated experience, more so than the other restaurants we looked at earlier. So give it a try. 
You're also going to find right in the middle of Central Park, Trellis Bar. Trellis Bar is an open air bar, and I love coming to Trellis Bar daytime or nighttime, in fact, to enjoy a cocktail under the stars or by the trees. I just think the fact that you're in Central Park and you can have a drink, it's just something really special about Oasis of the Seas, right? Because I think when you talk about cruise ships and you think of drinks, you're probably imagining being up on the pool deck, which is great, don't get me wrong, but I love that there's something totally different with the Trellis Bar. You'll also find Vintages on the Oasis of the Seas in Central Park. Vintages is the wine bar where you're gonna find a variety of wines. In fact, if you're a wine lover, this is probably where you want to go because you're gonna find the greatest variety of wines available. Wines are served either by the glass or by the bottle, not necessarily both, but depending on the wine type, you can have different options to choose from. So there are some wines that are included with the drink package, otherwise you can pay for it as you go. And again, if you're looking for the greatest variety of wines, this is the place to go. Also, Vintages is usually a quiet spot. So if you wanna read a book and you wanna be indoors, but you want somewhere quiet, believe it or not, Vintages can be a really good choice for you. And of course, you can have a glass of wine to enjoy that as well. How about a bite to eat? And that is gonna take us to Park Cafe. Park Cafe is a complimentary venue, no additional cost to eat here. Open for breakfast, lunch, and basically snacks. It closes at dinner time, but it goes right up to dinner time. And Park Cafe is a great spot for grab and go food. I really like Park Cafe for breakfast. They've got a bagel bar here along with some other choices. But what makes Park Cafe really nice is not only have a great bagel bar, but they also have at lunchtime the Kemmelwick sandwich. The Kemmelwick sandwich is the signature roast beef sandwich that is just so good. Make sure you get the au jus on top of it. It's a real winner, but it's a great spot, especially on port days, because sometimes you just want to grab something to eat before you get off the ship. You don't want the full meal. You don't want to go through a whole wind jammer or something like that. So not only is it a great alternative to the wind jammer in general, I like it because you can usually get in and out a lot quicker and have something to eat. They also offer coffees here, both complimentary and extra. And I love the outdoor seating at Park Cafe because I just like going in the morning, even during the summer months. It can be nice to be outside in the morning, maybe a little bit of a breeze out there. So have your bagel, have your cup of coffee and be able to enjoy the breeze. It's a really nice space and they have some wonderful seating all around Central Park, not only for Park Cafe, but just to enjoy. So again, the nice thing about Central Park is that it's just so different from the rest of the ship. It's a different pace, I think, and oftentimes it's a little quieter. You're also gonna find the Central Park Library here on Oasis of the Seas in Central Park. And it's kind of a neat place, obviously, as the name implies, it's a library, so you can go and borrow a book during your cruise if you'd like to. Also next door, you're gonna find some shopping. Tiffany and Company, yeah, that Tiffany's is available on Oasis of the Seas, and uh, yeah, it does cost extra, as you might imagine. You also find the John Hardy store to do some shopping at, so some jewelry is in your future, or you just wanna peruse, this might not be a bad spot to do it here on Oasis. But I think at nighttime, Central Park is really where it stands out. I love what they've done with Central Park at night between the lighting, the cooler temperatures certainly help, and also they have live music in the evening. I gotta tell you, you've gotta walk through Central Park at night. Any opportunity you have, whether you're going from point A to point B, or you're just simply trying to get around the ship, or you just wanna see what's happening, this is a great spot to go. I love how beautiful it is here, and this video does not do it justice. I mean, it's a great job, but you know, you've gotta experience it for yourself. It's really nice whether you're just hanging at the Trellis Bar, enjoying some live music in Central Park, or going to dinner. It's a wonderful spot, and I think we're looking really at home run. You're also gonna be able to see from Central Park down to the Royal Promenade, which is on deck five, and this is the main thoroughfare of any Royal Caribbean ship. So let's head down there and check it out. You're gonna find the Royal Promenade on any of the Voyager, Freedom, or Oasis class cruise ships, but this is your main area to walk around and explore. There's shopping, there's dining, there's activities, there's entertainment. It's really the Main Street USA of any Royal Caribbean Oasis class cruise ship. So there's lots to do here, and a lot of times you're gonna find people coming and going or simply hanging out, depending on the time of day where you board the ship is actually here on the Royal Promenade. You're gonna find plenty of bars and places to go. So it's a really big deal. And what's nice about the Royal Promenade on an Oasis class ship is just how much space there is. Let's start off actually on deck six of the Royal Promenade. And you've got Next Cruise. This is where you go to book another Royal Caribbean cruise. Next Cruise prices are exactly the same at home versus on board. The difference is you're going to have reduced deposit if you book on board and extra on board credit. Now, if you're watching this video at home and you're thinking, should I wait to book on board the ship? No, book it now, lock in the price because the price can go up, thus negating any extra on board credit you get. But if you're on board the ship and you're having such a great time, think to yourself, boy, wouldn't it be great to book another cruise? Then go down to Next Cruise and they can definitely book another cruise for you. It's a really convenient option to do that and it's free money for doing that. So take advantage of it while you're on board. Next door is the Schooner Bar, the nautical theme bar on Oasis of the Seas. There's also a piano here. So 
every evening you're going to find piano music. It's the sing-along tunes of Billy Joel, Elton John, and all your favorites you can hear by the piano. They take a request. It's a lot of fun. And, of course, there's the bar, so you can have drinks that make any sing-along just a little bit better if you have a couple of drinks in you. And the nice thing about the Schooner Bar is it has that nautical theme. It's not as pronounced as some of the other Royal Caribbean cruise ships that are out there. But I really like the Schooner Bar venue because it's a great spot during the daytime. They also use it for other activities like trivia. So when in doubt, maybe head down to the Schooner Bar because you never know what kind of entertainment will be waiting for you over there. If you're looking for a schooner bar drink to try out, how about the Dark and Stormy? It's a good classic cruise drink. Might be a fun one to try. And the nice thing about having a drink package, by the way, is you can always try drinks. And if you don't like them, you don't have to drink them. Also, across from Schooner Bar is the Shore Excursion area and the Photo Gallery. So the Shore Excursion area is where you can go to ask any questions and book Shore Excursions. My advice is you want to book your excursions before you ever get on board Oasis of the Seas. That way you have more time to choose from. Also, you'll be able to take advantage of the tours that are available before they do sell out because a lot of them do. So do yourself a favor and book them before you get on board. But occasionally, sometimes you just want to, you know, try something else out and you can book it on board or certainly ask any questions you might have. Photo gallery is where you can go to take advantage and purchase those photos that you may have taken. So you'll find different photographers around the ship and they will take your photos. It's totally complimentary for them to take your photos. There's no obligation to actually purchase any of the photos. But then later on, come up here and scan your CPASS card. And then you can see all the photos they've taken. They use facial recognition to pull your photos into your account and you can check it out. There's also a photo studio, which does have a sitting fee in order to go there. So if you definitely want to get like family photos or portraits or what have you, this is the place to go. But that's the deck six portion of the Royal Promenade. Let's go down to deck five, because that's really where the Royal Promenade truly is. And you're going to find a lot of activities and a lot of things to do, places to go in the evening time. It's a hub of activities. So there's lots of different bars and shopping. And we're going to check them all out, starting off with, yes, guest services. If you have a question, this is where you want to go. Any billing issues, discrepancies, problems with your room. You might end up in guest services. It's available 24 hours a day. If you see a really long line and it's not an emergency, I would recommend coming back a little bit later on. There's no need to necessarily wait in line off the bat. Sometimes you have no choice. You get locked out of your room. You get locked out of your room. So it is what it is. You're also going to find the port and shopping desk and the boom desk. Basically, you need support or you have questions about either one. There are people there at certain hours to take care of you. You're also going to find the Bionic Bar on Oasis of the Seas. The Bionic Bar is a robo bar. These bar robot bartenders make drinks that you order. You order your drinks via the tablets. You see how the table's there. And then they make the drink for you. They can't make everything. There's no frozen drinks here. But they do a pretty good job. It's a little bit of a gimmick, I freely admit that, but it is undeniably cool to watch and see. So you can order some drinks and they make non-alcoholic drinks for kids as well. You're also gonna find the Rising Tide Bar. This is a really cool idea. So this bar slowly goes up and down between Central Park and the Royal Promenade. So you can go on there and take a ride up to Central Park or a ride back down to the Royal Promenade. It goes every so often and some fun activity, something different to do. You don't really find moving bars like that. So it's kind of a fun activity. You're also going to find right in the middle of the Royal Promenade a classic car. All promenades have some sort of a classic vehicle. Check those out for the photo ops. And around the ship, you're going to notice these things. What are they? They look like little binoculars, but yeah, they're like telescopes pointed in the ground. There's a number of them all over the ship, each one with a different piece of art. So it's a great activity for kids or anybody to go do on maybe a sea day to go hunt around the ship. There's a lot of them to check out. You're also going to find Cafe Promenade, on, of course, on the... Royal Promenade and Cafe Promenade is where you can go to get your coffees, your desserts, your snacks. They also have complimentary coffees and teas as well as extra cost coffees and teas like lattes and macchiatos. You'll find in the morning pastries to enjoy and then the afternoon and the evening and late night you'll also find sandwiches. So whatever you're in the mood for, this is a good spot. Most people come to Cafe Promenade I think for the coffees because well, <laughs> cafe, coffee, get it? Yeah, okay. Well, that's where they're going to go for that. And again, there's complimentary coffee you can get, as well as the lattes. If you have a drink package, it does work over here. You're going to find the Island Market Shopping on the Royal Promenade. And this is just more of a shopping opportunity, different, you know, clothing. Primarily, you're going to find maybe some accessories as well here in the store. Across the way, there's more shopping. You've got the collection, which has handbags and jewelry and whatnot. And you're also going to find the Regalia Fine Watch Store, which offers, well, watches and other fine jewelry. The Globe and Atlas pub is one of my favorite places on any Royal Caribbean cruise ship. This is the English style pub right in the middle of the promenade. So the pub is known for a couple of things. First of all, it's probably the best beer selection across anywhere on Oasis of the Seas. So come here if you like beers. But in the evening time, I really love the pub because you've got a live guitarist who performs here and sings the songs that are basically bar songs, songs you know all the words to. And of course, just like the Schooner Bar, the more you drink, the better the song starts sounding to you and the 
more you want to sing along to them in public. It's a fun place, great for evening entertainment, and I think that a lot of people really enjoy the good combination of drinks that are offered here. All right, let's move down the Royal Promenade and check out some of the other options you have down here. You're going to find, depending on the time of day, different things happening in the middle, especially there's usually liquor sales, as you can see here, where you can purchase liquor. You can't use this liquor on board, but it will be delivered to your room on the last night of the cruise. So that way you can bring it home with you. Sometimes because it's duty free, you might be able to save some money. Also, you're going to find different shopping opportunities, different sales. I use air quotes for that, depending on <laughs> what item, how good of a price it is. Who knows? But also the Royal Caribbean logo store is here. This is where you want to go if you want a Royal Caribbean themed gift, t-shirt, hat, towel, sweater, whatever. This is where you want to go. A lot of people really like bringing home a little piece of Oasis of the Seas back with them. And I've got to say over the years, Royal Caribbean's souvenir game has gotten a lot better. Back in a couple of years ago, it was really just generic stuff all across the fleet. But now you can find a good variety of different Royal Caribbean themed things, tchotchkes, clothing to bring home. I really like these ideas and I think it's different and I applaud them for trying something different. Also, they have the models here if that's important to you. The Port Merchant Store is where you're going to find, well, more liquor to choose from. Also, tobacco as well. All this is duty free and all this you'll be able to bring with you back home, not to be consumed on board the ship. There's also more shops, believe it or not. You've got some Invitica stores. You've got some makeup. There's a lot of different shopping opportunities and I like doing these shopping opportunities, you know, really I think on sea days or maybe in the evening after the kids go to camp. I just enjoy having a little more, you know, window shopping. It's fun to do that at least once. And I think a lot of people really enjoy the logo shop and others enjoy maybe doing some duty-free shopping. I think most of this stuff is really just nice to have. It's not like don't rely on it. But a real staple of any Royal Caribbean cruise ship is Sorrento's Pizza. Yes, this is the complimentary pizza. No additional cost to dine here. And Sorrento's is known for not only a good variety of different pizzas to choose from, which, by the way, has gotten a whole lot better over the last couple of years, but it's also late night. If you're up past midnight, and I say way past midnight, this is probably where you're going to end up because there's not really anywhere else that's open that late. But if you're in the mood for pizza, man, this is the place for you. They make pizza here all throughout the day, and it's really nice to be able to go grab a slice, whether it's, you know, you're just waking up because you're sleeping in, or it's a mid-afternoon snack, or it's pre-dinner, post-dinner, Midnight, pre-show, 2 a.m., going to the casino, coming back from the casino. Whatever your excuse you need, this is the place to go. I love the Sorrento's Pizza. It just hits the spot, and it's one of those quintessential Royal Caribbean foods by far. You're also going to find near Sorrento's the Coca-Cola Freestyle Machines. The Freestyle Machines are only available to use if you have a drink package cup to use, but they are available here. They're also available in different locations, but you can see there's two at Sorrento's. There's also Bolero's Bar, which is the Latin-themed bar on the promenade. You've got, well, Latin music here primarily. There's also some events during the daytime, but I think most people come here at night in the evening because you've got live music that performs salsa, merengue, and other Latin music. It's really a lot of fun, a lot of energy here, and a lot of people really like coming here to hang out because it's just fun. So in addition to the drinks where you can get, you know, the typical bar drinks you might find at a place like Bolero's, you're also going to find some great music to go with it. I think if you are going to order a drink at Boleros, you really have to go with a mojito. It's the thing to get at Boleros. I'd say mojito, like number one, maybe a caparijina as well, might be a good choice for you. You're also going to find Spotlight Karaoke on Oasis of the Seas. This is a renewed venue that came in the 2019 amplification. And Spotlight Karaoke is, well, a karaoke lounge. It's a dedicated karaoke lounge. Usually on other ships, you just find areas that have karaoke from time to time. But this is a dedicated all the time karaoke. Although, to be perfectly fair, they do other events here as well. But the point is that this is really for karaoke. So every night you can come here and every afternoon as well to enjoy karaoke, whether you want to come and sing yourself or hear other people sing. There's also private booths you can rent out if you want to sing by yourself without people judging you. There's a bar, of course, but I think a lot of people would just come here for the full karaoke experience. People singing, some bad, some really bad, <laughs> some good, and then more bad. But you know what? That's part of the fun. You're on vacation and you can belt out your favorite tunes. For a lot of people, this is a really fun activity. And so Royal Caribbean decided to dedicate an entire venue to karaoke right here on the promenade. You're also going to find Starbucks on the Royal Promenade. So Starbucks is a kiosk, just like you'd find a Starbucks store anywhere else. The Starbucks kiosk, you can not only order drinks, which do cost extra, by the way, to order any drinks at Starbucks along with the food. 
But if you have a Starbucks card from home, you can actually use your Starbucks card to pay for drinks and earn rewards. You just can't redeem rewards here. If you've ever been to a Starbucks, like at your supermarket or a hotel, it's kind of like that. This is one of those licensed deals. But regardless, you can get the real Starbucks menu right here on Oasis of the Seas, including, yes, pumpkin spice lattes in the fall and all the Christmas drinks as well. So they'll be there for you. On the other end of the promenade is the Royal Theater. This is where you're going to find different performances and shows, including Cats, the Broadway musical, Love and Marriage game show, and even comedians from time to time. For the Royal Theater, there's usually not a cost. In fact, I don't think there's ever a cost to see a show in the Royal Theater, but it's offered throughout your cruise to so look for reservations, just like dining. It's important to make reservations for the shows as soon as you get on board the ship, so that way you have a guaranteed admission into one of the performances, because a lot of other people are going to want to go to those shows as well. So do yourself a favor, make a reservation beforehand. We're going to head down now to deck four in the entertainment zone for Jazz on Four. This is a dedicated jazz club on Oasis, and I love Jazz on Four. I can't tell you that if I was in the car, I'd ever really ever play jazz, but something about this venue I really like. It's different. It's fun. And there's live jazz music here in the evening. So maybe it's just the seating or something about it. But I like coming down here maybe right after dinner to have a cocktail and kind of take it in. It's a great experience. And it's complimentary as well to go to the jazz club. So check it out. Something fun to do. You're also going to find the Blaze Nightclub on Oasis of the Sea. So Blaze Nightclub offers a couple things. First of all, there's a comedy area over here as well as the nightclub later on. So it's a multi-use venue in that regard. There's, of course, a bar in here. But you'll find comedians. You'll find late night oops, oops, oops type music. But, of course, also comedy shows, which are complimentary to enjoy. Again, if you want to get a ticket for these, get that on the first day of your cruise via the Royal Caribbean app. Once you get on board the ship, connect to the Wi-Fi, and then you can book the comedy shows, the shows in the Royal Theater, the dining reservations. All those things can be done via the Royal Caribbean app as soon as you connect to the Wi-Fi. And using the Wi-Fi, by the way, on board your ship, the Wi-Fi is complimentary to use for the Royal Caribbean app. Otherwise, if you want to use the actual internet, well, that's going to cost you extra and you can buy a package. If you want to buy an internet package, I do recommend buying it before your cruise on the Royal Caribbean website. It'll cost you more on board than it will beforehand. And next up is Studio B, an ice skating rink that offers, well, amazing shows. But first of all, you can also go ice skating yourself on here. There's free ice skating times at select times where Royal Caribbean provides you all the gear you need. You just need long pants and socks. That's you're gonna have to pack on your own. But if you have those, you can put on the skates and the helmets and the pads and head on down to the ice skating and enjoy that. But if all that looks a little too much for you, well, then maybe just enjoy the show on Oasis of the Seas. You're going to find a complimentary ice show. I know what you're thinking, like Matt, ice show. Really? There's a guy in a duck and we're going to watch that. It's actually really good. The performances on Oasis in the ice shows and all the real cream ships that have ice shows are much better than you might actually think. And they're very, very talented. The folks that are doing these shows are not like people also serving you food in the buffet. These folks are actually very talented professional ice skaters, oftentimes having national or Olympic experience. It's really cool. Heading across on deck four, we're now going to check out the art gallery. The art gallery is essentially just an opportunity for you to preview the art that you can bid on during the art auctions later on in your cruise. So mostly just something to look at as you're walking through the hallway primarily. But some people do enjoy the art auctions. I'm not one of them, but if it is your thing, more power to you. The art auction is where you can bid on art. And hey, if that's your thing, like I said, enjoy that. But for me, I like sometimes stopping and looking at different art that's on there. They do change it out throughout the cruise. So it's not always the same art. Next up is Casino Royale, where you can go and hopefully win some money. It's a fun experience for people who enjoy gambling. You're going to find a variety of different gambling options, slot machines, table games, and, you know, other things you could possibly lose your money on or win money on, right? We're going to be positive here. You've got a lot of different choices in Casino Royale. Good luck to you. You're going to also find the Diamond Club on deck for the Diamond Club is the Diamond Lounge. If you're a Diamond, Diamond Plus, or Pinnacle member in Crown and Anchor Society, this is a dedicated lounge just for you. This lounge is available throughout the day, but in the evenings, you've got the Diamond Concierge here and a lot of other people. It's more of a social experience in the evenings, whereas in the daytime, you can come here and just kind of hang out. But they also offer alcoholic beverages here in the evening, along with some hors d'oeuvres. So if you're a Diamond member, it's available to you. Also, there's a 24-hour self-service coffee machine that you can go to. This is really a great benefit as a Diamond member. Not only the complimentary hors d'oeuvres and the alcoholic beverages, but I love the fact that there's a coffee machine here you can go to. So it's free. You can make through the machine lattes and whatnot. So, hey, the price is right. Take advantage of it. And that's something that, again, I think that Real Green does really, really well for its loyal members. 
Vitality Spa is up next, and the Vitality Spa at Fitness Center offers, well, of course, we're going to start off with the spa area. Before you get to the Vitality Spa, there's the Vitality Cafe, where you have drinks. Some are complimentary, and then you have some food. Some are complimentary, some are not. So depending on what you're in the mood for, if you want a smoothie or a shake, this is available too. If you have a drink package, the smoothies are included, provided they don't include protein powder. But the Vitality Spa is where you're going to go if you want to have a massage or a treatment of some kind while you're on Oasis of the Seas. The Vitality Spa does cost extra for all these services, and you can either pre-book it before your cruise or come on board and book it. The nice thing is when you're on board the ship, you can go and just take a tour of the Vitality Spa. It's complimentary for a spa tour. No obligation. They're pretty low on the sales pressure. Like, I've gone in here many times and just said thank you at the end of the tour, and no worries at all. But they offer a variety of treatments. There's also a salon if you want to get your nails done or your hair cut. That's available as well in addition to the treatments. There's also a thermal spa on Oasis of the Seas. The thermal spa is a pass you can purchase. So it's kind of a self-service, if you will, spa experience. Once you get a pass, there's limited amounts of pass for every sailing. And you can go here and enjoy things like the rain shower and the heated chairs. You come and go as you please. And if you go here enough times, it can be worthwhile. But if you're looking for to relax and for a fixed cost, it might be nice to get a thermal spa pass. Again, you can purchase the thermal spa pass once you get on board the ship. It's one of the few things you can't pre-purchase via the website. As I mentioned, there is a salon here as well. So if you're looking to get your hair cut, nails done, uh, shave for the guys, that's available to you as well. There's limited slots for these, so I would book them up in advance, especially for things like formal night. A lot of people like getting it done right before formal night, so that way they can look their best on that special day. And you're also going to find the fitness center on Oasis of the Seas, one deck up from the spa. Fitness center is complimentary to enjoy treadmills, bikes, ellipticals, free weights, weight machines. Those are available as well. And it's complimentary for all these things. It's a pretty impressive gym. You know, a lot of times if you go to a hotel or a resort, the fitness center is like a corner with a couple of different machines. This is a pretty big fitness center with a lot of machines and things to enjoy. I feel like in terms of how crowded it gets, usually like the first day of the cruise, it gets pretty busy, and then later on, it kind of opens up quite a bit. So, you know, people are on vacation. I like, forget this. I'm just going to enjoy my drinks at the pool instead of going to the gym. But it is available for you to enjoy, and the fitness center is a pretty good spot. There are additional classes that cost extra. So the fitness center itself is complimentary, but there are fitness classes like spin class that are available for you to do if you so choose. You can sign up for the fitness classes in general. Once you get to the spa on board, there's usually the sign-up sheet. Next up is Adventure Ocean, the area for kids on board. This is the supervised children's programming on any Royal Caribbean ship. And Adventure Ocean is complimentary. When you get on board the ship, you can register your kids. Usually registration is open on the first day of the cruise, right around one o'clock. You go in, just go to the particular area. The Adventure Ocean area is divided up by age. So that way the programming is appropriate for the ages. That way the three-year-olds and the 11-year-olds aren't intermixing. But the nice thing about Adventure Ocean is after you sign up, you can bring your kids anytime they're open during the regular session hours and drop them off. First up here, you see the play area. The play area is just an open area. This is really geared towards younger children who just need like time to like burst out and get some energy. But now we're going to move into the regular Adventure Ocean area. Adventure Ocean, as I mentioned, is broken up by age. Six months to 36 months is for the nursery. Three to five-year-olds are in Aquanauts. And then the six to 12-year-olds are in the older Adventure Ocean Club. And then you have the teen club beyond that. But when the kids are in Adventure Ocean, there's different programming for them. It's supervised first and foremost. You've got counselors there who have a background with children's programming and supervision. And then in addition to that, you're going to find different programming for the kids to do. The nice thing about Oasis of the Seas is it has the new Adventure Ocean, if you will, that's been redesigned. And it gives kids a little more choice in what they're doing. It's less structured in the sense that everybody has to do the same thing at once, but rather they give kids more choices. Sometimes kids want to do arts and crafts. Sometimes they want to socialize. Sometimes they want to play games. And sometimes they want to do a mix of all of that. And the nice thing about Adventure Ocean on Oasis is you're going to have that opportunity for the kids to do that. So it's not like they're going in there and this is school part two. This really feels more like camp for them. And there's different things they can do. My girls love doing arts and crafts, but also playing Gaga Ball, meeting friends on board, and just enjoying the whole experience. Adventure Ocean is complimentary during the morning, afternoon, and evening, all the way up until 10 p.m. And then from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., there's an additional hourly cost if you'd like to do that. If your kids are in the nursery, that does cost extra throughout the day. So the nursery has an additional cost, but the regular Adventure Ocean, whether it's the three to five-year-olds, six to 12-year-olds, or the teen club, is complimentary. For Adventure Ocean, children must be registered and fully potty trained to take part in activities. There are dedicated spaces for each age group, plus specialized areas like science labs and a theater for enhanced programming. 
Adventure Ocean is open most of the day, but their hours do vary depending on if it's a port day or a sea day. On sea days, Adventure Ocean typically opens at 9 a.m., then it closes at noon and reopens at 2, and then it remains open until 5, and then the evening session runs from 7 to 10. Adventure Ocean then closes at 10, but parents can leave their kids there until 2 a.m. for an additional hourly fee. The late night party zone runs from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. and is billed at $7 per hour per child for children who remain after 10 p.m. The nursery operates with similar hours for Adventure Ocean, although there is an hourly charge, as I mentioned, for nursery services. The hourly rate depends if it's daytime or nighttime. If you're taking kids that are 6 to 36 months old on your cruise, definitely make sure to not only register kids for the nursery, but make sure you drop them off as well. All too often, I see parents who are leery of dropping their kids off in Adventure Ocean, especially the nursery, because they're worried about them. They feel like they're bad parents, but this is your cruise vacation as well, so take advantage of it. Social 298 is the name of the Teens Club. It's available for kids who are 13 to 17 years old. The Teen Club is more of an open social area. There are structured activities for them, but it's less structured than Adventure Ocean. They're teens after all. A lot of times, sometimes they just want to hang out and just be together and meet other teenagers. So that's what the Teen Club is all about. It's a really cool spot and there's different things for them to do and there's programming available for them, but also plenty of time for them to kind of do their own thing and just be social. But it's a dedicated area for teens and it's complimentary in the Teen Club. Also in the Teen Club, you're gonna find an outdoor area. So there's the indoor area, which we just saw, and now there's an outdoor spot for them as well from Social 298. So when the teens wanna have a little more, you know, outdoor time, or just if the weather's nice to be outside, they have that. Royal Caribbean in general has dedicated more and more space to Adventure Ocean on their ships, and it really shows. You know, a lot of times people look at other cruise lines perhaps for kids programming and, and going on a family cruise, but Royal Caribbean, in my opinion, and I am biased, I do believe that they offer the best holistic experience for kids on board. You also find an arcade on Oasis of the Seas. The arcade does cost extra to play here. All the games are per game. You'll you'll spend a certain amount of money. Basically, the way it works is you take your Sea Pass card, scan it, and then you get charged for the game price, whether it's you know a dollar or two dollars or what have you. There is an option to pre-purchase credits on the website. I don't recommend that one just simply because in a lot of cases, you're always going to end up with like a remainder balance and it's hard to ever get rid of it. So I think your best bet is to actually just pay for your games as you go. You're going to find a variety of games, arcade games, shoot 'em ups skee ball, which I absolutely love, air hockey, racing games, and of course the crane games. Good luck ever winning anything in those. Something else kind of interesting is there's the unboxed area here on next to the pool deck. And these are basically self-service kiosks that you can purchase certain things that you might want to need. It's basically like a pharmacy, if you will, for certain things like sunscreen or tampons or shaving materials or medicine you might need. This is basically grab and go and it's available throughout the whole thing. Now that we've gone through the neighborhoods, let's see what else is on Oasis of the Seas because while the neighborhoods help break up a lot of the ship, it's not exactly always everything is contained within that area. There's a couple more things to check out on Oasis of the Sea, starting with, yeah, the Windjammer, the buffet. How could we forget that? My goodness, the epicenter of grab-and-go food on any roller coaster ship. The Windjammer is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Totally complimentary in the Windjammer. To go here, you just simply show up, wait, get your food, and then enjoy it. The Windjammer is a little smaller than you might find on some other ships. Roller Kirby really doesn't want everybody going to the Windjammer at once. That's why they added places like El Loco Fresh and Cafe Promenade and Sorrento's and Park Cafe and even Solarium Bistro. So there's a little more variety. But at the end of the day, for some people, it's just not a cruise without a buffet. And the Windjammer is available here to enjoy. I love the international foods, but a lot of people really like breakfast as well. And there's a lot of good choices. And for families where one person wants burgers, one person wants a sandwich, someone else wants something else all between, there's a good amount of variety. It's good for picky eaters and certainly a staple and a good option for anybody who's got picky eaters because there's just plenty to choose from. When you go to the Windjammer, you'll have to wash your hands upon entry and then you just simply go in, grab the food from the stations, they'll be serving yourself, and then take your food to your table. You can bring it anywhere, actually. You don't have to eat in the Windjammer. You can bring it out to the pool, back to your room, or somewhere else in between to enjoy. There's a lot of seating, and in breakfast, it gets pretty busy, especially in that 8 o'clock to 9.30 timeline where like, everybody wants to have breakfast. So if it's ever too, too busy, consider alternatives. Like I mentioned earlier, Park Cafe is a great alternative to this. Sorrento's, Cafe Promenade, Room Service, Larian Bistro, or even a specialty restaurant. It can be an option as well. The nice thing also about the Windjammer is you get some nice views of the sports stacks. So if you go all the way back, you might find some more options there. And of course, there's the main dining room on Oasis of the Seas. The main dining room is encompassed across three different decks. Breakfast and dinner is served every day of the cruise. Lunch is available in the main dining room only on sea days. There is no cost to eat in the main dining room. When you book your cruise, you're going to get a choice of either my time dining or traditional. Traditional is when you have a set time. 
you have the same table the same table made the same dining time every day of your cruise or my time is when you can make a reservation beforehand or simply show up and wait for the next available table depending on which option you book it's really up to you talk to your travel agent about that but you actually choose that before your cruise and then on your sea pass card you'll have the information about which deck and which table is yours to go to if you have my time it'll just tell you which deck is my time and then you go there and you know my recommendation if you have my time is make reservations for whatever time you want to do that the dinner times are available you know throughout the evening from about five to about nine o'clock or so the good news is for breakfast there's no reservations required you simply show up for that ditto for lunch it's just dinner and for dinner there are dress codes for each evening now the dress codes sound like whoa really impending but they're more loose than anything else don't read too much into them essentially there's a casual night most nights and then there's going to be a formal night or two on your cruise on a seven night cruise there'll be two formal nights it'll tell you in the cruise compass which night is formal night or not and really what formal night really means is just dress a little bit nicer but the menu across all the decks no matter which one you're on is exactly the same so don't worry that they're getting different food on deck three versus deck five it's the same menu it's just different locations different options for you you're also find izumi hibachi my favorite specialty restaurant i think on most Royal Caribbean cruise ships, including this one. So Izumi is a Japanese cuisine restaurant where you're gonna find, of course, sushi and also hibachi teppanyaki style dining. I love this because I'm a big fan of this kind of food. I think it's really, really good. It is especially a restaurant. On the sushi side, you pay as you go. It's a la carte pricing. On the hibachi side, you pay a cover charge and it covers all of it. If you have a dining package, you'll get a stipend to use at hibachi. Ditto, by the way, for playmakers. But over on the hibachi side, you pay a $10 fee and then you get to dine at the hibachi. Hibachi is very, very popular. If you want to do hibachi on your cruise, I would definitely recommend booking it in advance because it will sell out. It's very limited capacity and a lot of people love it because it's just that darn good and fun where they cook in front of you and they do tricks. So a really, really cool thing. You're also going to find on Oasis, the escape room. Yeah, Apollo 18 is a fictional escape room game based on a again a fictional space launch in which you get to try your best to solve a series of puzzles and clues in less than an hour to figure out the final solution before time runs out it's a lot of fun it does cost extra to do the escape room but it's a really different activity if you've never done one before it's a lot of fun you do it with other guests and i would definitely recommend it also tucked away you're going to find the card room the card room is kind of this general purpose area they built it initially for people to go and play like you know cards like you know hearts and solitaire and whatnot but you can go here for pretty much anything it's kind of this general purpose room you can find something and really nice about this room is just the views really cool that you have these views here on other ships this venue is being used by something else but you have the card room over here so you get a chance to enjoy it it's come as you go you also find a great model of oasis this is a scale model of the ships if you're looking for it this is where you'll find it and also tucked away up here is the loyalty ambassador this is your representative from the crown and anchor society why would you want to talk to the loyalty ambassador if you have a problem or a question about crown and anchor this is where you can go also music hall is on oasis of the seas music hall is well a place for live music you've got some rock bands and different concerts performed throughout the cruise here in music hall so if you're looking for music you can really jam out to music hall is the place to go they initially added this on the quantum class but they added music hall in the 2019 upgrades and i love music hall i think it's a really fun venue there's just nothing like live music and when you have it in music hall i think they've done a really great job with the vibe and the music the combination is really fun down on deck three is the conference center and business services essentially if you're not part of a group that needs the conference center you'll probably never come here but if you did the conference center is available for you they're just conference rooms they're really boring a bunch of chairs to look at of course, you're gonna be having a stateroom somewhere on Oasis of the Seas, and your stateroom is gonna be, well, somewhere else that we haven't shown you yet. You'll find different decks of rooms all around the ship on various decks, and which deck should you choose? What kind of room should you choose? Boy, we've got a lot of more videos here on our YouTube channel talking all about that, so it's hard to really pick one. A good idea is talk to a travel agent about what might work well for your budget and what your needs are, how many people and whatnot. But remember, you know, where you're staying for your cruise, you're only really using it for showering and sleeping and changing a lot of times you're going to be out of your room doing other things so there's a good impetus if you will to maybe spend less on your room and more on activities and things to do outside like on shore excursions and whatnot what you're looking at right here is what an inside room looks like on oasis these are oftentimes the cheapest rooms the less expensive rooms on board and there's still plenty of room it offers you the kind of things you need while you're on board but just that all you need and then you're out doing all the fun things on there but of course it's also nice to have a balcony so you know, different strokes for different folks 
In addition to using the elevators, there are staircases that bring you throughout the ship. So you can always walk to a deck or wait for an elevator. It's up to you. The nice thing about the staircases is, well, you don't have to wait for them. And of course you can burn some extra calories. And if you go up a staircase, you might think to yourself, well, geez, I just earned that dessert, even though you only burn like 10 calories, but never mind that it's an option for you. You're also going to find the Sweet Lounge on Oasis. The Sweet Lounge is available for sweet guests only. If you're in a grand suite or above, you'll have access to the Sweet Lounge. Just like the Diamond Lounge earlier, the Sweet Lounge is a dedicated area just for sweet guests. There are hors d'oeuvres in the evening. The Sweet Concierge is here. And the Sweet Concierge is really the reason to stay in a suite because they're your own private guest services that can handle any issues you might have. In the evenings, there's complimentary alcoholic beverages. You also have a self-service coffee machine, just like the Diamond Lounge. And of course, food throughout the day to enjoy. More snacks than anything else. But hey, it's included. And if you're staying in a suite, definitely take advantage of what the Sweet Lounge has to offer because there's great views, great social aspects. There's a bar over here. It's really nice. And right next door to the Sweet Lounge and connected to it, in fact, is Coastal Kitchen, a complimentary restaurant for sweet guests only. The Coastal Kitchen is available for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for guests that are staying in a grand suite or higher. If you're in your junior suite, you can only go to Coastal Kitchen for dinner only, but this is a complimentary restaurant. Think of it like your own little main dining room. The menu changes every day, but it's an elevated experience, I think, compared to the main dining room, and they have different food that's there. So there you have it, a look at Royal Caribbean's Oasis of the Seas. There's something like an Oasis-class cruise ship. It's truly impressive. If you found this video helpful, please make sure you hit the like button on here, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.